What do you want to do, Mark? What is Mark doing? I want 17%. Appreciate the offer. Thank you very and it's, much. And it's either a yes or no. No, I'm, not gonna I'm gonna make you an offer. There you go, then I'm out. Oh! That was, that was a fast yes your decision, right? Gonna, I'll tell you my offer. Let's take a deal. deal. Done, let's go. Deal. Oh. Yes, <laughs> welcome back to DBL. I think so you've in. got what it takes to swim with the sharks. Well, we have a very special guest on the show today, live straight from his car. Yes. It looks like the billionaire <laughs> owner of the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Are you stuck in traffic or just kind of like trying to escape the family and the kids and hiding out in your car like I do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually outside the Mavs practice. We start the season in a couple weeks, so I had to escape. It was too loud in there. Nice. Wow. He's well, He wears many hats. So yeah. let's talk about some of the recent headlines because the billionaire space race is on. We've talked about, the sh uh, talked about it on the show. There's a lot of opinions out there. Are you going to be launching yourself into space soon, <laughs> or do you think it's a waste of resources? Well, one, I'm not going to be launching myself into space. I'm terrified of heights. Oh. <laughs> Two, I've got an investment in a company called Relativity Space, which actually uses enormous uh, multi-story high 3D printers to print rockets. And so I think it's a valid um, use of resources because we want to explore. You know, you, we want to see where we can go in, in the universe. And don't think of it as just now. Think of it a hundred years from now, where can we possibly be? Not only on other planets or the moon, but you also have to think relative to what might happen to Earth, because we're not treating it as nicely right. as we should. And so while some of these things might seem outrageous and self-indulgent, if you look at it purely from a science and a, a deep into the future perspective, I'm glad we're doing it. Amen. Um, first of all, I'm a Trekkie, so I believe in space exploration, and I totally get you. But I've been, you, thank you, my friend. Live long and prosper. But I have, I have a hard time with taxes, and I'm just going to ask you really straight up here. You've made headlines recently sure. about them. We're going to ask you, why are some people so against paying their fair share of taxes, especially the ultra-rich in which you were a part of? I don't think people, at least for me, I've, I wrote a blog post years ago, and I've said it many times, that after military service, the most patriotic thing you can do is pay your taxes. Exactly. So I have that. no problem paying taxes. And, you know, you can raise my taxes more. Where I start to get, where I start to take a different stance is when you start taxing non-earned income, right? Because if you start taxing what's happening in the stock market, stocks go up and stocks go down, and it can create a lot of unintended consequences. But if you, I think their current proposal is 39.5% for regular income. I'm fine with that all day long. Corporate income tax at 25 to 28 percent. I'm fine with that all day long. Um, it's just when you get into non-earned income that I start to disagree with what's mm. going on. Cuban. It's <laughs> good. It's a good answer. No. I, I do, I, I do want to say this because I think when you get to a person of your status, there is, uh, you know, you become a character, not like a person. But I worked in the NBA arena for a, an NBA arena for five years. You were a man that behind the scenes talked to everyone, Aww. was so pleasant. So I just want to throw that out there Very because nice. we always say terrible things Appreciate about that. people. <laughs> uh, so I just want to throw that out. But, so tell us about the new season of Thank Shark you. Tank, which premieres Friday, October 8th. What was the craziest pitch you heard? So, so many. But I'll tell you one that was just like incredible. Um, there's a product that comes on that is going to be in every medicine cabinet within Ooh, the next oh. five to ten years that affect that it cures hiccup. <gasps> it's the crazy. Hiccups? Yes. Like what? imagine never having to deal with hiccup problems at oh all. Oh my god. Got all the science and all the research behind it. I'm not gonna tell you who got the deal, but I was in the mix of fighting. How? It was incredible. Wow. Incredible. How do you my grandfather That's had the hiccups for a week? It was like, and did you try it, it Mark? It's crazy. Did you try? Is it like a ghost yes, in the bottle? I mean, I didn't have the hiccups at the time. <laughs> but no, I mean, no standing on your head, no holding your breath, okay. no jumping up and down on one foot. Whoa. They had all the research and all the data there, and it worked. That's brilliant. And it cost $15. It is. So, Mark, let's have some fun, okay? You ready? I have an elevator pitch for you. You probably no. never heard that before. You ready? <laughs> Go for it, Jeff. All right. Never. Ketchup. <laughs> Mustard. Salsa. 
What do they all have in common? Well, I'm going to tell you. They are delicious condiments that you can find anywhere, from grocery stores to stadiums, Mark. But what's missing? <laughs> you talked about yep. medicine cabinets. I'm going to tell you what's missing from the table. Uh oh. Big Jeff's Sardi Jardinero. Yeah! This mouth-watering symphony of pickled vegetables is one condiment you cannot live without, Mark. Once you try Sardi's Jardinera, you'll understand why. You can put it on pasta, salads, hot dogs, sandwiches, even a Cuban. <laughs> Jardinera is a well-known staple in Chicago yes. where over a million pounds are sold each year. But, Mark, I want to take it national and make some money. So what do you say? How much you want to invest? <laughs> Why are you already selling this? You uh, know, get out there and sell it, Jeff. Mark, get, yeah, why are you selling it? Honestly, where do I start? Do I sell it at farmer's markets? Do I do it online? Should I sell it through my social yes. media? Where, where do I start? Yes. All of them? All the above, you take the path of least resistance. You figure out a way to make some jars. You take them to a farmer's market. You make some that you can sell online through your social media or a website that you create, and you see what the response is. I can't tell you how many companies that have come on Shark Tank that started in farmer's markets and have grown to five, 10, 15, $25 million or more in sales. And that is such a great opportunity, Jeff. Just you know, can it in your house to get started, Make those 100 jars, take it to the farmer's market, and if you sell them, and look at that, and just come on DBL and just <laughs> pitch like a madman. Yes! <laughs> so how much are we talking here, Mark? <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> the, we got a bad connection, Jeff. What did you say? We got Hello? a hiccup. We got a hiccup. I got a cure yeah. for that. <laughs> Mark, thank you so thank much you, for chatting with us. We really appreciate you. To our viewers, do not forget to catch the new season of Shark Tank on ABC, premiering Friday, October 8th. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. Bye, Mark. Thanks, guys. Appreciate <laughs> you having me on. Take care. Bye.